Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel. And for those of you who are new to Black Cube magazine, please feel free to click the notification bell and subscribe if you like this video. And please don't hesitate to write comments. Today we are in Paris. The art world is back after the summer break and September and October are definitely the busiest months here in Paris. So let's walk through some of the best shows we've recently seen. It's Daniel Arsham's show at Perrotin Gallery, Daniel Buron at Carmel Menour, Irving Penn at Ropac Gallery and Germaine Richier. We are now just right in the middle of Daniel Arsham's show. He references a lot pop art and pop culture. He's also really interested in capturing the passage of time. So if you have a closer look, you'll often find clocks or signs of decay in his paintings and sculptures. The title of the show is 20 years. This is to illustrate the evolution of his practice, but also it's meant as an homage to his 20 year collaboration with Emmanuel Perrotin, the founder and owner of the gallery. By the way, Daniel Arsham is also known for his common projects with luxury car makers like Porsche or big fashion labels. And some of these um, recent collaborations was with the Louvre, which is quite interesting and we see some examples here. The Louvre gave him access to their molds collection and he used these models and added his signature elements like gold and silver applications or bold colors and crystal inlays to symbolize decay. So we are now heading to the next stop of our tour, crossing the River Seine. And along the way, you are going to have some nice views of Paris. This, for example, is the Louvre. And uh, on the other side of the river, we're seeing Galerie Kamel Menour presenting a show by Daniel Buron. Let's go in and discover a world of lines, stripes, geometry and bold colors. In this exhibition, we see recent works of the artist dating from 2021 to 2023. It's a whole series of high reliefs in various configurations and various colors. What is special about this show is that the gallery granted Daniel Buron complete artistic freedom for the project. And so he totally transformed the gallery space and presented his set of works as comprehensive, immersive installations.
Daniel Buron was born in 1938 and made his name in the 1960s. Right in 1965, he started experimenting with a striped canvas. With alternating white and colored stripes and ever since he has used this visual tool as he calls it to find freedom based on internal and external constraints So we are back in the streets in this wonderful historic neighborhood of Marais and uh, we are moving over to uh, Tadeusz Ropak Gallery to see a show by a true icon of photography, Irving Penn. Irving Penn is world famous for his captivating black and white photos and he was particularly involved in the avant-garde art scene in the 1960s. In the so-called Summer of Love of 1967, he became fascinated by the counterculture of San Francisco and the Bay Area, breaking the taboos of American society at that time. One of the protagonists of this avant-garde movement was Anna Halperin, the founder and choreographer of a pioneering postmodern dance group called the Dance Workshop. The photo series we are seeing here is rarely exhibited and an homage to the dancers and the pure and sublime aesthetic of their bodies, their poses and gestures. We are on the way to the last stop of our tour. It's actually the second gallery of Emmanuel Perrotin and we are seeing a show by uh, Germaine Richier, one of France's and internationally best-known sculptors. The exhibition shows all the different facets of the work of Germain Richier and it spans the whole career with works from her early years until the final creations. Born in 1902 in the south of France, Germain Richier found strong inspiration in nature and she translated this experience into her sculptures 
that are mainly centered around the human figure. Later, her work was strongly marked by the experience of World War II. The war actually broke out while she was on a trip to Switzerland and she decided indeed to remain there in exile. The war also changed her creative approach. She turned away from naturalism and changed to reveal the tragic vision of the unbearable reality. The works of her later career feature rough and shredded surfaces, pitted with holes, and often she blurs the line between figuration and disfigurement. So, thanks for watching this video. We hope you liked it. And please feel free to subscribe, to like, or to comment. See you soon.